Hi, I'm Anne Marie from SoapQueen.com and Brambleberry.com. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Soap Queen TV. Today, I'm going to show you how to make soothing chamomile infused oatmeal soap. This gentle recipe is ideal for baby skin or for sensitive skin types. A combination of olive oil, shea butter, and castor oil create a creamy lather. Colloidal oatmeal and bentonite clay are added to give a nice slip on the skin and for their skin calming properties. The soaps are then stamped with a stamp that is a little cute stork stamp making these ideal to give as gifts or to sell. The majority of this recipe is comprised of olive oil pomace. Pomace oil is made by extracting the last little bits of oil and fat from the paste left over from pressing the extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil pomace has all the gentle properties of regular olive oil, but produces a more firm bar of soap. To give my oil extra soothing properties, I'm infusing the oil with mm, Egyptian chamomile. The use of chamomile in skincare has been traced all the way back to ancient times it smells so good, including ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Today, chamomile is still ingested and applied to skin for its anti-inflammatory properties. Now, if you've never made cold process soap before, stop right now and watch the first four free videos on cold process soap making on Soap Queen TV. Or read the first chapter of the soap crafting book or the first several chapters of the pure and natural soap making book. It's important to learn how to use lye safely and get a few basic recipes under your belt before you attempt this soap, which involves an intermediate technique. First, let's infuse the olive oil pomace with the chamomile herb. Infusing oils could not be easier. Measure out 14.5 ounces of olive oil and pour it into a double boiler. I'm using a little more oil for the infusing process than my recipe actually calls for just to account for the oil that gets lost in the tea bag. I prefer to use a double boiler for this process so the oils are not in direct heat and do not become too hot. You can also use a crock pot on the low setting. If you don't have either of these, you can add the oils to a saucepan. Just make sure to keep your eyes really closely on it so it doesn't become too hot and burn. Never leave any oil unattended when it's on the stove. Measure out two tablespoons of the Egyptian chamomile herb and place it in a sealable tea bag. Seal the sealable tea bag with an iron. Place the bag of herbs into the oil and steep the oil with the tea bag over medium heat for two hours. Stir every 20 minutes or so and do not leave that oil unsupervised. Finally, turn off the heat and remove the tea bag. Now, let's prep the other ingredients. Disperse two teaspoons of bentonite clay and four tablespoons of distilled water. The bentonite clay gives these bars a wonderfully smooth feeling on the skin. It's important to disperse the clay in water rather than oil because clay is super absorbent. And the additional water helps prevent the clay from drying out the soap. Then measure out two tablespoons of colloidal oatmeal and set aside. I'm not using any sort of fragrance for this recipe. Sometimes extra sensitive skin can become irritated by fragrance oils or essential oils and I want these bars to be incredibly gentle. If you'd like, you can certainly add a fragrance or essential oil of your preference. In particular, I would recommend a lavender essential oil or a chamomile essential oil for their calming properties. Now I'm going to gear up for safety. I've got my long soap making sleeves on and I'm going to be putting on my goggles and my gloves next. Goggles are extremely important to ensure that no lye or raw soap splashes in my eyes during the soap making process. I'm also soaping in an area that has great ventilation with no kids and pets. I've combined shea butter, chamomile infused olive oil pomace and castor oil in a large container. I've also prepped my lye water. Both my lye water and my oils are about 110 degrees. If you'd like, you can add sodium lactate to the lye water to expedite the hardening of the soap. Sodium lactate is the sodium salt of lactic acid and it's commonly used as a preservative in food products. For soaping purposes, it facilitates the hardening of the bar and thus eases the unmolding process. It's an optional step, it's not necessary, but I personally don't soap without it. 
The usage rate is one teaspoon of sodium lactate per pound of oils in your recipe. So we're adding one teaspoon of sodium lactate. Carefully mix the lye water and the oils together by pouring the lye water mixture down the shaft of the stick blender. I do this because it helps prevent air bubbles. You really want to get those air bubbles to the surface before you start mixing so your batter is nice and smooth. Alternate pulsing the stick blender and using the stick blender to stir the mixture. Continue stick blending and stirring until the soap reaches a thin trace. Trace refers to the point in soap making when the lye water and the oils have emulsified. Once the soap has reached thin trace, it will continue to thicken over time. Now add all the bentonite clay mixture and the colloidal oatmeal. Try to trap the additives under the stick blender and stick blend until fully combined. Carefully pour the batter into the mold, filling each cavity. Tap the mold on the counter to help level out the batter and get rid of air bubbles. Your final step is to spray the soap with 99% isopropyl alcohol to prevent soda ash from forming on top. Allow the soap to harden in the mold for about three to four days. Because this recipe contains so much olive oil, these soaps may require a little bit more time in the mold. If you try to remove the soap from the mold and it doesn't release easily, give the soap another day in the mold. It can be sort of hard to wait, but you don't want to accidentally ruin or rip your soap. Here's some soap I made last week and it's ready to unmold. Let's see what it looks like. Gently pull away from the sides and then push from the bottom to release the soap. Oh my goodness, I love how creamy these soaps look. Place a stamp on the small end of the soap and use a mallet, or in this case I'm using a whisk, tap firmly in the middle. And then pull the stamp off and voila! Oh my goodness, how cute is this little stork stamp? It would be perfect for baby showers. For more tips and tricks on how to stamp your soap, watch the How to Stamp Soap video on Soap Queen TV. Allow these soaps to cure for at least four to six weeks, and then you're ready to use them, sell them, or give them away. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Soap Queen TV. See you next time. Happy soaping. so it doesn't become too hot and burn. And of course, always leave the oil never unattended. Okay, is the sodium salt of lactic acid, and it's commonly used as a food preservative. <laughs> Love how creamy these bars look. Mm. And of course, no smell, so why am I smelling them? Okay. <laughs>